Are you easily scared of the dark? Allow me to shed some light on the situation. Easily taken care of. Oh, you may need a little more light. Let me shed a little more light on the situation so that you're not so frightened. Yes. Oh, yes. Much better. Oh, <laughs> it's I don't know very about that. I'd better not go into it. A little gruesome, a little too gruesome for you, kids. Or this. I believe that is a tale for another time. But of course, you're not here for that. You're here to hear a dead time story, which is what you are going to hear. Yes, a little yarn, so to speak. <laughs> You've got to the right place. The world has many secrets. Secrets people do not want to share. Perhaps yours is one worth sharing. If a Halloween from the generic phantom to you. I present to you, if you will. Join me in this story, will you? Well, I have nothing else better to do. Come with me, young ones, and we will share in Story time. <laughs> you sound insane. You sound mad. I'm not calling you. No, all right, I am calling you mad. Only, only a good sane friend would tell you the truth. George. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous. But how can you say that I'm mad? What happened? Now, I, I, I want to know. Talk to me about your crap. Because I got the best coffee. <laughs> yeah, right. Working stiff. You look like a bum. What happened? Please. I had been and am. The most sane man you've ever met. But why will you say that I'm mad? I'm telling you what I heard was real. I was not hallucinating. And I don't need a doctor. Well, let me finish. Hey. Okay, all right. And then you, then you. Dear Lord. It, it is impossible to say how, uh, how first the idea entered my brain. Passion? There was none. He never wronged me. He never wronged me. 
George, he had never done anything to me. I think it was that I. That I. I see it today. I still see it in my dreams. I still see that I in my nightmares. Taunting me. Taunting me. Taunting me. George. It's, it's here as I speak to you that resembled the eye of a vulture. Dreadful beast. There was a pale blue awful filament just dangling right there over. <laughs> Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold, and so by degrees, very gradually, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the old man's life. I did! I did, George! I did! Be quiet and let me finish, will you? I knew, I knew that if I told anybody this, they'd think I was crazy, they'd think I was mad, and my sure. already... You are mad. <laughs> you gotta fly in here, George. Well, let me finish. And I you know why I am not, and I am telling you that I am not mad, and I am telling you that this is the truth, and I am telling you I heard that sound. Now shush. And this. This is my point. Mad men know nothing. Mad men know nothing. But, uh, oh, you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded. I was never kinder to the old fool than during that entire week before I killed him. And every night, Around midnight. <laughs> I would turn the little door knob of his door and open it. Oh, so, so, so gracefully. And I would, every midnight, open that door. And then I would stick my head in. Thrust my head in. And moved it slowly. So that I might not uh, wake the man who was asleep. It took. It took me about an hour to place my whole head in. I think about an hour. I could see the old man upon his bed. Oh, but every night, every night that vulture was closed. closed. I could not complete my mission. For it was not the old man that vexed me. But it was his eye. Look like this. Of yeah. Every morning when the day broke, I went boldly into the chamber and spoke courageously to him, calling him by name in a hearty tone, and inquiring, Oh, how did you pass the night? John, the night was fantastic. I didn't hurt through the night. I was fine. Right now, I am... Reading the papers will let me have my quiet time, please.
But that's right, George. Every night I went to that room and one faithful night. I fairly chuckled at the idea. <laughs> yeah. And perhaps he heard me, for he shot up out of that bed, and he said, Who is there? I did not move. I did not dare move. But I could tell you now that he did not see me, for his room was as pitch as black. Yes, I knew you could not see me. However, the old man did not lay down, not for an instant, because I did not hear him lie down. The windows had been barred, of course, because he had miscreants breaking into his room, stealing things. I heard a slight roll, <laughs> and I knew. It was the groan of mortal terror. Groan. <laughs> of mortal terror. It was not a groan of pain, not a groan of grief. Oh no, oh no. I think that, would you? He had, <laughs> here's the funny thing, George. He had fancied them all costless. He had no reason to fear these noises. Or maybe the floorboards creaking of age. <laughs> George, all in vain. He was in danger. He was in severe danger, George. Patiently, George, I waited for resolve to open a little, just a very little crevice in the lantern. So I opened it. On that vulture eye, it was open. Whoa! I hear, I hear the sound, and you say that I act mad. A hellish sound, such as a tick in a watch. Tick, 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 tick. You know what the sound was. It was the sound of the old man's beating heart. It increased my fury as the beating of a drum. The old man's terror must have been extreme. For it grew louder, I said louder every moment. I refrained and stood still. But the beating grew louder, louder. I thought the heart must burst. The sound would be heard by the neighbor. The old man, hour had come. Oh. Ah! I threw open the lantern and leapt into the room. The old man was stone dead. I removed the bed and examined the corpse. Yes, he was dead. His eye would trouble me no further. George, if you still think that I'm mad, you will not think it any further. It, once you hear the way that I dispose of the body, I took up three planks from the flooring of the chamber and disposed all between the scandals. I then replaced the boards 
all so carefully, all so cleverly, so cunningly, that no human eye, not even his, could have detected anything wrong. As the bell sounded the hour, there came a knocking at the street door. I went down to open it with a light heart. For what had I now to fear? There entered three men who introduced themselves with perfect suavete as officers of the police. A shriek had been heard by the neighbors during the night, suspicious of foul play. I think there might be I smiled, for what had I to fear? I bade the gentleman welcome. The shriek, I said, was my own in a dream. The old men I mentioned was absent in the country. I took my visitors all over the house. I bade them search, search well. While I myself, in the wild audacity of my perfect triumph, placed my own seat upon that very spot where he was, underneath the floorboards. The officers were satisfied. My manner had convinced them. I felt myself getting pale, and I wished them to go. My head ached. And I fancied a ringing in my ears. Oh, that same terrible noise I told you about. That same noise, George. It was increased. And what could I do? It was a low, dull, quick sound, much such as a sound as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I gasped for breath. And yet the officers heard it not. I talked more quickly, more... I couldn't make out speech. But the noise steadily increased. Why would they not be gone? The noise steadily increased. Oh, God, what could I do? I foamed, I raved, I swore, I swung the chair. Was it possible they heard not? Oh, mighty God, no, no, they heard. They suspected. They knew. They knew just for They were making a mockery of me, a mockery of my horror. This I thought, and this I still think. No, I, I don't think it. I, I know it. I could bear these hypocritical smiles no longer. I felt that I must scream and die! And now, again, hark! Louder! 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 Villains! I shrieked. Disassemble no more! I admit the deed! Tear apart the planks! Here and here! It is the beating of his hideous heart! If that last one was boring to you, please, I have another yarn that I'd like to share. Hope you enjoy.
Oh, somebody was around. Hello? Hello? Anybody's around here. Shut up! Don't leave me alone! Oh, so, so, shut up! Stop talking to me! Oh my god, what's in there? Who's in my mind? No more! No! Leave me alone! God, leave me alone! Stop! Get out! Get out! I don't see you. Where are you? I'm right here. In your hair. Oh, oh. oh, God, get out of here. Oh, God, get out of here. Oh. Hey, get away from me. Get away. Get away. These trees, they're all moving. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. What the? Oh, my god. get out of here. Get out of here. Oh my god. Oh god. I'm back where I started. I'm in the same place. I, I'm lost. I've been walking around in circles. What is that? Leave me alone. Get away. I don't remember that being there. It's kind of odd. Not even the same tree. I gotta get through here. Oh! Oh my god! Oh, god, let me go! Get away from me! What the? What is this thing? Why is this thing wrapping around my leg? Where's this coming from?
there's that rest of it. That's what attacked me before. It's that giant tree I saw before. Ah! Dude, what's wrong with you, man? Jay! <laughs> Dude! Stop playing, man! Welcome back to the land of the living. As a good friend of mine, Dr. Frankenstein, once said, life isn't worth living unless you have lived and created life itself. This I have not partaken in yet. I have taken in the grisly acts of taking life, smiting it, and telling lovely stories to boys and ghouls such as yourself. This is the generic phantom saying, get out of my home. It will teach you to go walking about cemeteries at night, looking for videos on YouTube that you're not supposed to see. <laughs> oh yes, and before I forget, remember to submit to look at this scary face, to comment, and oh yeah, take a few souls while you're at it. Some need the kind helping hand to get through to the other side. <laughs>